and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and enter into God's sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. 
This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sin through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. God. Sequence, Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praise. A lamb of sheep redeems. Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contented in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary declaring, what you saw wayfaring, the tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen, to Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining, have mercy, victor king ever reigning. Alleluia.
Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Lord, be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. On that first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I ask God's blessing upon each of you that you may have a holy, healthy, and happy Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. I just said that with some enthusiasm. But does it really make any difference that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead? The saints thought it did and still think it makes a difference. They are eternally with God in heaven. I want to be in heaven someday, and I think it makes a difference that Jesus has risen from the dead. About today's feast, one of my patron saints, the great Saint Augustine, writes, and he departed from our sight, that we might return to our hearts and find him there. For he left us, and behold, he is here. Take a few moments to ponder this thought of the great thinker, St. Augustine, for it is profound. Contemplating this truth allows us to see that it is a game changer what Christ has done. The power of the resurrection is not something to be experienced at that distant time when we either close our eyes in death to this life or when Christ comes again in glory. It's now. When Jesus was transfigured before his disciples' eyes, he stood before them. Now that he has risen from the dead, his resurrected presence is with them. This is not something that comes as a result of a request. It's simply a gift. When Jesus was born in time while remaining God, God blessed humanity with his divine presence, showing us that we have within us his loving presence, unless we blot it out with our sin. Human being can indeed provide a worthy home for God. This mystery of how God can enter into a human allows us to see God in our brothers and sisters and indeed in all of creation. God is one with God's people. God journeys with us, transforming us into the vessels we are meant to be. Now the resurrection of Christ Jesus brings us further and transforms us even more. Christ's glorified presence standing before us and living within us shows us that we are all much more than we see ourselves to be and show to others. We have a depth, purpose, and essence that goes way beyond the superficial treasures of our existence to the very core of who we are. Slowly but surely, we are being given opportunities by God to be transformed more and more into one with Christ. This whole process will 
find final completion when Christ comes again in time and gathers all things and all peoples to himself. Then the fullness of truth will be realized. As Jesus walked the face of the earth, he was known by many names and described in various ways. In and through all his earthly accomplishments and teachings, something special stood out, an authority that was not elsewhere. Jesus' divinity shined forth. While many could not necessarily comprehend it, they knew it and could point to it. It is the divinity of Christ that can bring humanity the corrective it needs and provide it with a proper axis or a foundation. This Easter morning, we celebrate the resurrected Christ once again, and that same presence points us to what we need in order to live in the kingdom of God. Christ is here. Christ is within us unless we are in the state of serious, that is, deadly sin. We have the power. Christ is not sitting up in distant realms of heaven as an observer. Christ lives within us. That's the source of the power, that authority. That means that because of the resurrection of Christ, we have the same divine spark that gave Jesus his authority when he was physically, that is material with it, materially with us. Through faith, we can see, think, act, and be different. But doing so comes with a choice. It isn't something that just happens automatically, like pouring two things together and they fizz or don't, or change color or something like that. It's a thing that requires our cooperation and our awareness. For just because God's resurrected presence is within us doesn't mean that things automatically happen. We must choose to act on the power within. We have to decide by faith in Christ to take the plunge and put flesh on what we have accepted to be true. In other words, to live what we know is true. Who are you? Just as with the earthly Jesus, we who are can be described in myriad of ways. We can articulate our accomplishments, provide someone with a personality profile, discuss our likes and dislikes, and many other things. But ultimately, who are you? Does the person who is being transformed into the image of the resurrected presence of Jesus factor into your description of yourself? When God fashioned us in our mother's wombs, giving us an immortal soul at our conception, there was a holy and sacred meeting. It was sealed with a divine kiss. At that meeting, God instilled his very presence within us and gave us a name known to none other. It is not our earthly name, but our divine one. This name claims us as one who is special and chosen in God's eyes. Can't you see how really accepting and embracing this truth can change the whole business of our lives? Nothing is the same, and all has greater depth and meaning. This self known only to God, is the self that will one day leave every single attachment to this world and rise with the eternal Christ of God. This is the self that when it is able to shed all earthly attachments and false notions, will discover and know freedom in a way never possible before. This is the perfect love of God lifting us up and transforming us into who we really are, not who we want or need others to be. Knowing this about ourselves makes the blessing of the Easter candle at the vigil of Easter pop with so much meaning. That blessing read like this, prayed over the candle. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, 
All time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age forever. Amen. So then who are you? It is hoped that our celebration of Christ's resurrection, the Easter event, provides us with the new fresh ways to think about Christ and God's love of his people. It's hoped that it also provides each one of us with the fresh new ways to think about ourselves and who we really are. Grasping the truth of who we are created to be makes us realize how even more important it is to preserve and restore our relationships with all of God's children. One who lives in us also lives in them. As St. Augustine reminds us, Jesus may have left us, but look, he is here. This is a real cause for Easter joy. It's even more a cause for working tirelessly and promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ, working to rid the world of injustice, not by changing others, but by changing within ourselves, making sure that we treat everyone as a person who deserves a home and defending at all costs the dignity and sanctity of all human life from conception till natural death. Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every Easter we get a chance to be reminded of who we are, uh, not just with the words I shared with you, but with the opportunity to renew our baptismal promises because we are children of God, adopted children of God. And so I invite you to stand. Dear brothers and sisters, we are here to celebrate through the Paschal Mystery that we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. And now, may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Now, sprinkle you with holy water, the water blessed last evening. All the waters of your With renewed Easter faith, we now stand before God confidently and present our petitions to God who is the God of life. And after each of them, you may respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That our Holy Mother, the Church, may be filled with Easter joy in her remembrance and celebration of Christ's Paschal mystery, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the light of the risen Christ shining for all the world to see may guide people to repentance and belief in the gospel. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That all who struggle in faith and are burdened by doubt may be strengthened by God's grace this day. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That this Easter season may be a time of growing in the gifts God has given us. We pray, that our beloved dead may share in the life of the risen one. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions of this Mass, and for all of our individual needs, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, hear the prayers we offer to you on this Easter day. For we pray in the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Benedict and St. Scholastica, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Lawrence, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember the special intentions of this Mass, and to all of our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us safely offer each other a sign of our Lord's peace. Peace to all of you. Peace, Deacon. judgment and condemnation with your loving mercy be for me protection of mind and body and a healing remedy behold the Lamb of God behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed
washed us in the tide, flowing from his open side. Praise we him whose love divine gives his sacred blood for wine, gives his body for the feast. Christ the victim, Christ the
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Now I have the solemn blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today.